Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Clay. This is the Eagle 5. This is my new, yeah, I've had it about a year and a half now, but this is my RV. I uh, bought this and uh, had a lot of changes in my life, so now I'm starting to do a little bit more traveling, a lot of RVing, and uh, along with owning an RV comes all these projects that you didn't know existed in, in the RV world and, until you own one. Today, I'm going to be installing a soft start RV into the air conditioner, the Dometic air conditioner on, on this camper. And one thing that I hope I can help you guys with um, is actually maybe showing you some of the wiring of how it goes in. Um, it seems like there are a whole lot of different videos out there on installing these, um, these soft start units on different air conditioners, but none that actually showed my specific air conditioner. And I hope that uh, anybody out there with this specific air conditioner can learn something from this before you get up on the roof and start messing around with it. Before we get started, I do want to make one quick comment that this video is in no way, shape, or form sponsored by anyone. Uh, I bought this soft start RV myself with my own money for my own personal camper. I'm not even a monetized channel. This is just for my enjoyment as a little side hobby. and. Uh, and I hope that showing you this video, you can, you can uh, get some assistance with your project. Because why not help each other, right? Alright, thanks. Let's get to it now. Somebody wants to get in a shot. You might get in a shot. All right, let's take a look at what you get when you open the box. Here's a little instruction sheet, which I say instruction sheet, it's not really instructions. It just gives you the website to go to um, to download the instruction sheet and, and wiring diagram for your specific air conditioner. Um, I guess they would have to include a phone book if they put every model in there. And you got a little installation kit. It's called a bonus installation kit. I'm not sure why it's called a bonus installation kit. I, I would think it would... Uh, kind of need to come with the kit um, but uh, yeah a little, little wire uh, grommet a little pigtail a couple of zip ties and some wire crimp connectors uh, which we'll get to those crimp connectors a little bit later on but then you have your actual unit um, with your wiring coming out of it and uh, you know, one little bubble wrap on it not a big deal um, then you have some kind of like uh, Chinese knockoff VHB uh, type product. I'll call it. I'll call it a knockoff because I don't think it's the actual 3M VHB, but uh, it is still pretty, um, pretty good looking adhesive. Uh, one thing I do like um, the wires all seem to be pretty good, and uh, and they are pretty thick. They're all different colors to make it easier for installation, and uh, nice little convenient uh, thing of them that they've already gone and pre-stripped the ends for us so that was nice of them so that's it that's your entire installation kit that's the whole thing so let's talk about some tools that you'll need to install these uh, if, if you go from the right to the left we have uh, a Phillips screwdriver you'll need that to take the um, main cover off some wire crimpers um, a pair of needle nose pliers might make it easier to get a couple of the connectors off some diagonal cutters so you can um, snip the zip ties and and uh, any other wiring you'll need either a flathead or a 5 16 nut driver to get the electrical box cover off uh, electrical tape for taping up your joints um, you have I have a little cleaner I use some 409 you can use rubbing alcohol water whatever it doesn't matter and some paper towels just give a, a nice clean spot for that adhesive to stick to from the the soft start unit uh, so sp some spare zip ties I ended up needing so um, I happen to have a couple of those little stick on zip tie holders that were that that one of those came in handy and then some wire loom that came in handy so that's it that's all I ended up using for my entire installation process the next thing I did was I went to the Soft Start RV website and downloaded the wiring diagram and instruction sheet for my actual uh, unit, the Dometic Brisk uh, air conditioner. 
Go ahead and check the website though, make sure that it hasn't changed on any future installs. This only applies for mine as it is now. So now that we've looked through the instruction sheet, now we can disconnect the power. Safety second. And we can climb up the ladder now. So be careful. These little collapsible ladders like to collapse. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and remove the four screws. Make sure you drop them and let them roll off the side of the RV. But there are two in the uh, back on the sides, and then there are two in the front. So Phillips screwdriver makes quick work out of that. Go ahead and pull those off. Now go ahead and take your cover off, set it off to the side somewhere. Now this next part is absolutely not part of this install, but I want to show you just in case uh, you've never seen inside one before. I hadn't. So you'll have to forgive the boom mic guy. He's, uh, he's officially fired after this job. It wasn't even recording audio, uh, so that's why I've got to do the narration. But see down there, that's where your air is coming from uh, through the little filter through the bottom side of the camper. Um, then it goes through that grate and the blower uh, blows it back down into the camper. It's pretty uh, simple operation, honestly. But then you have your compressor over here. We'll be working on that a little bit. There's your blower, fan. And then there's your electrical box where most all of our work will be done. First thing is you're going to go ahead and take off the electrical box cover, the 5 16 nut driver, or you can use a flathead screwdriver, either one. All right, next go ahead and take off the electrical box cover, and that'll expose your running capacitor. That's where we're going to be making a lot of adjustments uh, to the wiring here. Um, I'm also kind of dry fitting the soft start unit to see where it would be a good place to put it. And, Right now, I, I don't. I can't put it on top because it sticks out and it would hit the fan. I can't put it sideways on the top or it would cover the two screws. Um, I can't put it on the face of it because that would um, cover up all the wiring diagram and everything. So it seems like that that back area is going to be the best place to put it. All right, the first, it's not even a step on the instructions, it's a pre-step, is to route the blue, black, and yellow soft start wires into the electrical box. Now, you'll see I'm making one mistake here. I actually routed all five, but I, I'll, I'll fix that problem here in a second. All right, now we're going to go ahead and break out the little grommet. Um, I was a little disappointed that Dometic didn't even have any uh, chafe protection there. Um, now you can see I've got the brown and the red wire removed um, out of that. Now it's time to start uh, breaking out our connectors and putting the appropriate connectors on the wires. One thing I was not happy with the soft start kit was that it came with these yellow crimp connectors which are normally for 10 to 12 gauge wire and this is 16 gauge wire so I bent it over and, and doubled it up um, so I could get a little bit thicker thicker bite on the wire and that usually works pretty well but as you'll see in a little bit I'm actually going to end up changing a couple of these connectors anyway um, if I were to do this unit again I, I would I would totally change a couple of these connectors around with some better ones but these will definitely work for the job so if you saw the red one got a male connector as per the wiring diagram so did the brown one they got a male connector Give it a good tug, make sure it's good and secure, not going to come off on you. Um, the blue one says it gets a male connector. And again, I'm doubling all these up because the, the, the connectors are for thicker gauge wire than what the soft start RV actually comes with. So I was a little, I'm just a little surprised to see that, I think, is all a $350 unit that, you know, they they cheaped out on the connectors I guess I don't know uh, let's see here the black one gets a female now that one will eventually get changed to a flag style and the yellow one also gets a female which um, also needs to be changed out to a flag style the instructions aren't going to tell you that though the compressor has one nut holding it on go ahead and take that off and you'll pull that little top cover off make sure to lose the nut you're red in the brown wire that we made sure we you know, put in correctly the first time and uh, 
they get routed along with the other wires over there to the compressor. Now make sure you have that sheet with you. And it says the white compressor wire. This is the first step. Follow the white compressor wire from the compressor to the run capacitor C terminal. Disconnect from C terminal and connect it to the blue soft start wire. So that's what we're doing here. Step two is connect the black soft start wire to the terminal that the white compressor wire was on. Step three is connect the yellow soft start wire on the terminal next to the red compressor wire on Herm side of run capacitor. Now step four says if you see a second red wire next to the red compressor wire, disconnect it and seal the end with electrical tape. Step five, after removing the compressor cap, which we already did, disconnect the blue compressor wire and connect to the red soft start wire. Tape the connection. Note, do not place wires back under the compressor cap. Step six is to connect the brown soft start wire onto the piggyback end of the four inch pigtail then connect the female flag end of the 4 inch pigtail onto the terminal that the blue compressor wire was on. Route the wire to exit the cap with the red and the white wires. Honestly this could have just been a single female flag end connector and then we would have eliminated an entire junction with electrical tape and all this other mess. So I'm not really sure why it, they felt the need that, to have this 6 inch or 4 inch whatever it is pigtail. Um, it just really seems unnecessary. I do get it though, they're trying to make a universal kit that one little assorted baggie of connectors will work for every single air conditioner on the market, so it is what it is. But um, go ahead and put your cap back on, tighten it down, secure, and tape all the connections. I'm actually going to come back and cut this zip tie off and put some wire loom on in a minute, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and zip tie them all together. I'm going to tape up this connection, uh, just because I wasn't really happy with the metal contacts being slightly exposed. So the hardware kit actually came with some of the correct size female 90 degree flag end connectors. I don't know why the instructions didn't say that. I followed the instructions as far as you know connecting the, the female connectors to the black and the yellow wires, but you really need these 90 degree um, connectors the female connectors now they're not insulated so I've got I've just wrapped a piece of electrical tape over the top of it here just to just to try to keep that uh, electrical box cover from accidentally touching anything but um, but yeah so I stripped off the yellow and the black female connectors because they're too tall you can't put the electrical box back on so I, I put the the 90 degree flag ones on didn't have any problems after that. Go ahead and zip tie that bundle of wires underneath the box. Get them nice and secured. Now I'm just going to test fit this, make sure that there is clearance with my big bundle of wires underneath there. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean it off. Make sure it's nice and, and uh, as clean as you can get it for that adhesive. You don't want that stuff um, falling off. I mean, it is up there in the heat on top of the roof of the camper all day, so um, I don't know. At some point, adhesives will probably fail. Now I have the wire loom going on. This is this is not part of the kit. I'm just I'm a fan of wire loom, and I happen to have some. Uh, I think it's going to be uh, good to keep everything nice and tidy and and safe and protected and all that good stuff. You can see where the loom goes in towards the back and zip ties in with the main uh, main bundle of wires underneath the motor there. Then I have one of those stick-on zip tie holders just to give it a little extra tension to keep it away from the fan. I'm gonna go ahead and put our electric box in, secure it down, peel off our fake 3M VHB adhesive. Still seems like good stuff though. It, it stuck pretty good. I don't know if this little glue thing will stay forever, but I'm gonna use it as an extra 
way to secure the, the cables away from the fan. I don't know you can see the how close the fan is right here. So I don't want those wires getting caught by that. Then we're going to add another one right here on the outside of this vent just to be triple sure. I need extra wire loom. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in wire loom and then secure it with a couple of zip ties. The last step is going to be to turn the power on and make sure you get a green light. And we have a green light. How awesome is that? After it starts blowing cold, you got a green light, everything's good. Go ahead and put your cover back on because you're done up here. Well, gang, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I know I sure learned a lot doing this project. I've never looked inside of an RV air conditioning unit before. This was my first time. So I really, I really got a lot out of this uh, video myself. With that, good luck on your project. Take care, and until next time, we'll see you then.